Hello again, everyone. Lovely to see more of you coming into the theatre. Um, so, 2018, um, as I said before, uh, going off the stage, is a bit of a roller coaster for our next two guests. I'm sure you're all following the progress and ultimate demise of Aqua Blue, the um, Irish uh, pro team. <laughs> In case you didn't hear that, that was a boo from off stage. Um, the the team were supposed to, was that you, Adam? Uh, um, so the team were due to ride their last race as the Tour of Britain. Um, and in the end, they decided to fold even before getting that opportunity. So two of the guys who were due to race that decided instead of sitting at home and moping, they were going to go out and do their own thing on the bikes for a week. What they created was something incredibly special, which caught the imagination of so many cycling fans. And I think for anyone who did follow it, really reignited what it was that we all fell in love with cycling for to begin with. So before I introduce them on stage, I want to give you a little glimpse uh, of what it is that they get up to on their travels. Let's have a look. Approaching the uh, top of Col de Ton, and a bit of a, I have to dig in this last bit, but oh my God, these are worth it. It's paved for the top, they said. Uh, I said that. Bet Larry's regretting his friendship with me now. I'm not kidding. I actually got little kicks of excitement watching that. That was brilliant. Please welcome to the stage the authors, the instigators of the wonderful No Go Tour, Connor Dunn and Larry Warbass. As my mother would say, I hope we're not get, going to get the weather that you two are expecting. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to bring the, the, uh, the coats, yeah. Connor forgot his sandals, but oh. we remembered the coats. So, were these, uh, were these your no-go to your jackets then? Yeah. These are what kept us warm uh, on all the cold nights out there. So. Team Brandon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't lose Larry. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't snuggle up together at night for warmth then, no? Uh -huh. uh, no. <laughs> well, just for comfort, yeah. not for warmth, <laughs> just because you could. Exactly. <laughs> so guys, talk me through um, the origins then of the no-go tour. Whose idea was it and when did it come about after you realised that the Tour of Britain was not going to happen? Um, I think we kind of like simultaneously sort of suggested it, to be honest. Um, I kind of went to Larry, I've got, oh, let's just go for a bike ride. And Larry's like, oh, I'm literally going to say the same thing, man. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, I think we were both just there from the start. Yeah, it was kind of like we'd been talking about doing some sort of adventure on our bikes for a while. And we... We just never really had the time. We were both like pretty serious about our training, about you know the racing, everything like that. So <clears throat> we could never really find the right time to like just go do some big bike adventure. And so then I was trying to convince Connor to do it like after Tour of Britain. Maybe we'd just even do a two-day thing where we just go on a big bike ride, stay at a hotel, come back. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, we got some time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> and so what was the thinking about this adventure? What were the criteria, if you like? Before you set off, you thought we were going to do X, Y, Z. Um, I don't think we really had any criteria. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of the fun part of it. It was like, we're going to just leave, do our normal training route, because we kind of know like the first sort of 70k out and then back, but we normally come back, you know. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we did that, we were going to do that bit and then just keep on going like the same distance and then we'd get there and then we were going to make the next day's plan. Um, so we really didn't have a clue. Like I told my girlfriend, Stacey, I'll... I was like, I promise I'll be back in eight days, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> in what state, where I'll have been, what I'll have done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah I guess the, the only thing we, we, well, I got lucky because Stacy still had to work at the Tour of Britain. So that was the only reason I could convince Connor to come do this. Other, otherwise, 
I don't think uh, we would have had the opportunity. But, uh, but yes, thank we you, Stacey, yeah. for letting him out. Where <laughs> thanks, is she? Stacey. She's there somewhere. We, we love you. It's all thanks to her, really. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, we just, I guess the one thing we thought, you know, it'd be cool to sort of bring people along with us. Now we don't get to do Tour Britain. Uh, not that we have like, you know, a million fans or anything, but we could bring our fans sort of like for a bike ride with us anyway. And so we thought, why not do it? similar to Tour of Britain, since we have eight days to do this anyway. And I said, oh, like, maybe we can just do the same length. We'll do eight days. And uh, then I thought, oh, yeah, maybe we should come up with a name that was like, kind of similar to Tour of Britain. And nothing rhymes with Britain, unfortunately. <laughs> Did you uh, try? Oh, I was, yeah. I was going yeah. for it. But, uh, we had a brainstorm in WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, came up with no-go tour, because it kind of rhymed with ovo. Uh, so no go, ovo, no-go. <laughs> Close enough. I see where you were going with yeah, that. That's yeah. good. And uh, I kind of like named it without asking Connor's permission. Yeah. I just put it in a blog, and I said, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> so, but it eventually it caught on. Yeah, yeah. I liked the name in the end. Yeah. yeah. In the end. I like that. <laughs> in the end. If you hadn't planned your route, you hadn't planned any hotels, is that right? But you had to make some preparation before going because you had to carry all your stuff with you, didn't you? Well, that was also kind of last minute as yeah. well. So uh, <clears throat> I wrote uh, some of our friends at Rafa and said, oh, could we get some bags? And so it was, yeah, they were excited. They were sending us some bags. And then unfortunately, like, the French post isn't the best post system. Oh, so bags didn't exactly get there in time. And it was maybe the day before we were going to go or... <clears throat> And we realized we had no bags, so we went to the bike shop. Yeah, went, went to. A, luckily, we found a bike shop still open in Nice at that time. And it was uh, it was literally like an hour before the bike shop closed. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we would have been in trouble. <laughs> and they had two two bags, yeah. two, two oh big goodness. saddle yeah. bags. And they didn't even think they had them. I had to yeah. tell them they had them. <laughs> <laughs> we were pretty much climbing around the bike shop. But, uh, um, so yeah, we got really lucky with those. And then we went to Decathlon, uh, which I don't know if you have Decathlon here, but essentially oh, it's yeah. like yeah, your basic general sports store and mm. we just got like $20 bike bags that like your grandmother put on her cruiser bike, you know, and <laughs> they fit on our handlebars mm. and... I realized seven days into the trip that mine was upside down instead of... <laughs> 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 All your food was falling out the bottom. That's how you lost your flip-flops. Yeah. Your bike was upside down. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that, that in a little a second. Story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean... It, Quite a different experience from, from the usual professional experience. Because, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people in here have gone on, on bike rides and big bike rides, and you know the level of planning that goes into it. I'm laughing to myself because it would take a pro to only think about these things at the last minute because they're usually all done for you. I mean, what kind of a difference did it make carrying all your stuff on the road? And um, I, I really loved it. It was just, uh, it was kind of quite freeing just to be um, sort of self-dependent and not really have that much stuff at all. Just kind of, you take your dry bag out of your saddle bag and that was kind of it really. Take it, everything out onto the hotel floor and get your toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was pretty liberating. You yeah. know, I, I realized, <sighs> what do you call it when people like pare all their stuff down? Uh, like, I don't know, downsize, and well. Um, no, no, not downsizing. It's like this new trend. Everyone's doing... Minimalist. Minimalist yeah. or yeah. minimalism yeah, yeah. or whatever or something like that. I'm a hoarder. You're speaking yeah. to the wrong person. Exactly. <laughs> also. So, recovering. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I realized I'm pretty much a hoarder. And uh, it really made me come to the realization that you don't really need that much stuff. And, and I actually, I really enjoyed it because it was like, well... You didn't even have to decide what to wear that day since you only had one thing, right? It was like mm. pants or shorts, okay. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, it was it was it was awesome, and and I actually got home and I like donated a bunch of my clothes. So, wow. Yeah. But you thought that your bike was a lot heavier than it was, didn't you? Oh yeah. I mean, the first day we went out and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know how we're gonna yeah. do this. Uh, like, I mean, my knees hurt like a few k into the ride because our bikes were so heavy and. And it, I, I honestly, we went down the first descent. I hope you didn't include that video in this because we went down so slow because I, I honestly thought like the first turn, my bike would just fall <laughs> over because it was so heavy. Oh, so and funny. <laughs> just going down this descent and Larry would be like on the other side of the road. And like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I was like, wow, this must be what it feels like to be Connor because he, he's, 20, he's 20 kilos heavier than me. I mean, he's tall, so not trying to say anything, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, eventually we got back and 
I said, we need to see how heavy our bikes are because I have at least 20 kilos extra. And it was only seven kilos. <laughs> <laughs> So. Oh, we'd been telling ourselves. But at least you like. made, made you mentally stronger as you went. Yeah. And physically. Yeah. Um, Connor, how did you manage to bring enough food? Because, <laughs> you know, Larry's referenced it already. You're a, you're a large chap. You need a lot of fueling on the road. How, yeah. did, you, how did you do that? Um, it was just an ongoing task, really, I think. Um, <laughs> any time. <laughs> we kind of, I say, so the first half of the trip, in my head, I was like, right, we're doing this like holiday biking adventure, so I'm just going to eat whatever I want, just like loads of bread and cheese and bacon and things like naughty stuff. Um, <laughs> but then we realised after we basically at the bottom of Colder Gland on our biggest day, it was absolutely pouring down, and we had the biggest lunch I've ever had in my life. Like we just sat for about an hour and a half and ate continuously. <laughs> like I literally ate one of the biggest French bait, like big one. <laughs> and then we set off and I was like, I'm gonna be flying after this. <laughs> oh, I was creeping so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like falling asleep on the bike. <laughs> oh. I was like, right, I'm not, no, I'm not doing this again. We, a, we, we got kind of like a procedure after that. Then it was just Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. I was like, Haribo, Haribo. <laughs> Field on <Coke>. fine sugar. <laughs> um, so, yeah, kind of went for the fast sugars after that, but just as much as you could eat. The, we the, ate so much. The fueling strategy developed over the course yeah. of the trip. So. <laughs> Refined it by the end. Mm, yeah. So you both set out with, I guess, a similar mentality and a similar spirit. How did you both approach it on the road? What, were you both of the same mindset or well, I'd like to highlight say differences? <laughs> initially, it was a cycling holiday where we <laughs> enjoy the sights. And <laughs> this <laughs> so was your steady. approach, Connor, yeah, I'm this, guessing. Well, no, it was uh, both this agreement, really. Um, but I should have got it con contractually written down, <laughs> I think. Because <laughs> like, the, the first climb, Larry's like, Oh, we could do a real big week, man. <laughs> Let's just push on. <laughs> where are um, you there? Yeah, the last, it, yeah. just, it just turned into a let's smash each other as hard as we can, I think. <laughs> yeah, kind <laughs> of. <laughs> but I, I was up for it, I think. I think I relaxed a little bit. I think the first day I was like, come on, man, let's do this. Let's get. <laughs> we also, we just assumed, I was like, oh, we can do like 200K a day or something. Well, with all the extra weight, like, you go a bit slower. So... Yeah. With the first day, I think we did 180k or something like that, and it took us like seven and a half hours. So, and we we didn't leave particularly early. So, and we stopped for like an hour for lunch, and then I realized like, okay, we, we can't be doing this every day. So yeah. we, we had to do a bit of like editing and mixing as we went. But uh, but yeah, I think the first day I was like, let's not stop. Come on, let's keep going. And and he's like taking videos and everything. And I was oh come on, man, we're never gonna make it to this <laughs> hotel. But I think I kind of started to appreciate it over the course of uh, the week. Like, I relax a little bit. Yeah. Because that seemed to be, from afar at least, a bit of a, a, a not a revelation for you, but, but you did seem to be the more strict of the two at the start of the week <laughs> and, and sort of whipping his ass on climbs and, and trying to get him to stop his social media quite so much. But then... <laughs> You apologised to him part way through and said, "You know what? I've been a bit intense. Maybe, maybe we should just enjoy this a bit more." Yeah, Larry was definitely the root master. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I definitely cracked the whip the whole week, but you know, it was. <clears throat> I, yeah, I guess I realised this is like I'm always so maybe too focused when I'm training. You know, I don't like I don't like to stop that much. I, I you know, I'm like, oh, I can't take too many photos. Like it's going to break up my training ride. And then I realised. Like, you got to enjoy what you're doing, mm -hmm. and part of that's just like stopping for a few minutes and taking in the view. Uh, and that was actually one thing. It just this whole week, like, made me realize, like, wow, like we actually do an incredible thing. Uh, we get to go some incredible places, and it was like, it was almost like the lens through which I looked at everything was different. Like, I even got home and I was like, this is like gorgeous. <laughs> but you know, the week before I was in the same place, and I wasn't really thinking that. Like, just when I was looking around, so yeah, definitely. Uh, Definitely changed something, flipped some switch. Yeah, and I think we still challenged each other as the week went on. We still kind of, even though we weren't racing, it still got pretty kind of competitive, not with each other, but just with like the day we set out, like the, the outdoors day. 
it was like we had to go up outdoors as hard as we could, otherwise it was going to be dark and mm. we wouldn't get to our hotel. <laughs> Connor all of a sudden pulled something out that was just like magical. I think he did the best climb of his entire life. So, uh, yeah, it was crazy. I was just so tired. And I was like, we need to get up this fast, otherwise it's going to be pitch black. So I was like, right. <laughs> Nearly um, pitch black, but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it but was like all or nothing. And then Connor suggested like a gigantic day the day after, which I was kind of expecting us to do something a bit more leisurely, but... So I think it was a bit, mm. bit of both. So and and I mean, you had that race against the clock every day, trying to get to beat the sun, essentially. Um, but with like really a, a a destination in mind, there was there was once where you left a bit um, stuck without a hotel or potentially stuck, and there was no Wi-Fi or something. What were the what were the difficulties? Um, I think the one the it's bad if having no Wi-Fi is really a difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> First world problems. <laughs> uh, I think the, the outdoors day was actually when we cut it the yeah. finest <clears throat> because we did outdoors then called the Larch, so you keep on climbing up. Or no, not Larch, uh, uh, Seren. Oh, Seren, yeah, yeah, Seren. Um, and it was like, Seren's pretty small road, kind of feels a bit wilder. You're like out there a bit and it was dogs at the top. Massive sheep dog chase as so I was like, I'm gonna lose my leg. <laughs> <laughs> that was like gave Larry the camera. So Larry's supposed to film the dog as I'm defending him. And all we and get, I was too scared. I was like, oh. <laughs> all we get on the camera is Larry going, oh. <laughs> and a, a shot of the floor. <laughs> but yeah, that day it was like getting pretty dark on the descent and I was like, oh and i earlier in the day I knew there was a hotel kind of halfway down and we were just like Please be open, and it was luckily it was open. And, and they didn't really want us there when we got there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty typical. But yeah. you know, <laughs> they, Quite finally friend. they're like, oh, "Okay, fine. Like, we'll find your room." <laughs> and then they're like, "But you need to eat now." So, so we had to literally just sit down in our kit after we'd done like seven and a half hours, like really hard day. <laughs> got we got oh yeah, we rained on half the day, so we're like soaking wet, and we just like sat and ate dinner in our kit. We're like. Okay, whatever. And then we had to sleep in bunk beds. Yeah. And Connor didn't fit in the bunk bed. Uh, <laughs> he slept, slept on, on the floor. floor. <laughs> uh, and then we got up in the morning and our bikes were in the exact same place. We oh, left yeah, they were like, on oh, the we'll road. put your bikes, we'll put your bikes in the garage, just leave them outside. Okay. We walk outside. Bikes still where we left. <laughs> so you roomed together. I love that, even though you could have you could have been more like the rest of us and had your own bedrooms, but the life of a pro cyclist is difficult to escape like that. Was yeah. it the company? Was it the money? Why did you, why did you room together? Probably a combination of everything. Yeah, probably the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how lovely. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we didn't really think about that. Yeah, I don't say, I didn't uh, even consider that as an option. Yeah. But. Now you think of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next year'll be way better. <laughs> <laughs> so I've mentioned already the incident with the sandals, the flip flops. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I'd kind of looked on sort of Instagram and a few blogs on how to attach sandals to a <laughs> saddlebag. And I was like, all these guys have got their sandals on their saddlebag, it's fine, Larry. I'll just leave them on the saddlebag and they'll survive the trip. And I was like, Man, they're they're not staying on that saddle bag, they're going to fall off. And they're just we're flopping a bit, you know? Like. Look, they are definitely <laughs> staying on. There's no way, like, look how tight they are. Um, and then and day two, day two, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I lost them on day two. Uh, and it was cold at Finestra. On the, we did the descent down the gravel and didn't even think about losing stuff or anything. No, no, we didn't. And uh, we were just, we got down the descent, it was pretty hairy, and we were just glad to have got down it, and uh, our arms just knackered from like descending on this gravel. We actually had to take a break, because our arms were <laughs> so sore. <laughs> um, so we're like pretty pleased with ourselves, we're getting down, we stopped in this little cafe at the bottom, pretty like high on life, getting some cafe, caffeine, caffeine in us, and uh, then I was like, where are your sandals? <laughs> on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, where are your sandals? I'm like, oh no, <laughs> the sandals are gone. I was like, oh. And we should point out the difficulty of Connor Dunn replacing sandals on a tour like this. What size are you? So I'm size 14. Um, and Larry's like, it'll be fine, just go to a shoe shop. Like, well, a lot of the coffees go to a shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> I actually so. made him go to the shoe shop as we were <laughs> waiting for the coffee. That was like my punishment. So I'm walking down this Italian high street, little Italian town high street, and going to all the shoe shops. And, uh, uh, and they're like, oh, yeah, we have shoes. And I'm like, they're like, what size are you? I'm 14. <sighs> <laughs> we have size nine. <laughs> <laughs> the, big, the biggest they went was size nine. So I was like, oh, no. He, he had also just gotten these flip fox, like, what, the day before uh, the trip? I was really proud of these. He'd worn them one day. Yeah, I'd only worn them <laughs> once. And I was like, 
<sighs> so you're arriving then in the evening. I mean, you hadn't brought, I guess, evening attire with you anyway, and sometimes saying quite nice hotels. And what, just rocking up in your shorts and your bare feet or your socks yeah. or? So that night I went to dinner in my bare feet. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't you wore socks, you wore socks. I wore socks, but I don't think they noticed because I like ran really quickly from the door to the table and then got my feet <laughs> under. <laughs> You're really inconspicuous, Connor, well done. <laughs> <laughs> the yellow jacket distracted the, you know. the eyes up here. <laughs> um, so yeah, but we got lucky and I can't remember what town it was, we found a big outlet store. Um, I mean, Borg Samaris. Borg Samaris, yeah. One of them, I don't and, remember. Uh, they only had one sort of set of shoes that was in my size. So well, not was in my size, it was like two sizes down, but I kind of just put the toes over the edge and <laughs> did the job. But uh, Lara's like, you can't wear them. They're just they're the ugliest things I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so then we did a photo shoot with the sandals. Yeah. Just because. Oh, they're so comfy though. Like, Do you still have them? Yeah, still have them. Um, <laughs> two sizes too small. Yeah. Uh, I think Stacy's trying to slowly burn them. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to throw them in the sea at the end, but <laughs> I'm hanging on to them. I think. They're, they're like a mascot. <laughs> so, at what stage did you guys realize that you weren't really on this journey by yourselves? That you had all of this support around you, both virtually and and eventually, then, it, you know, in, in a very physical way as well. I, I mean, I would say right at the start, it started to <clears throat> on social media really. Uh, blow up, you know, and it was like all, you know, people were writing us and commenting and it was like, wow, this is getting a lot bigger response. And we just thought like maybe our moms would be following us <laughs> and a few other people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then it was like, oh, this is, this is pretty crazy. And then it was really when we met someone on the road who's actually here today. Oh. Uh, we met him on the top of Col de and uh, are, they, are they in here right now? Put your hand up if this is you. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. And, uh, and then we were like, they're like, oh, you know, we've been following you, whatever, can we get a photo? And I was like, oh, wow, like, <laughs> this is crazy. Like real like, people. Yeah. They're real people, you know? <laughs> and then later that day, the next climb we did, uh, some other people were like, ah, you guys are the no-go tour you guys. We're like, oh my <laughs> gosh, what happened? And, <laughs> and then the day after that, we met an Italian guy who essentially we'd just been sitting down at this table. We stopped for a coffee and there were no tables left. And there was just a guy who looked like he was getting ready to leave, like in cycling kit. And I said, oh, like, let's go. Just maybe we can take this table. And he was like saying in Italian, like, oh, he was just about to leave. And so, OK, I could, I could communicate a little bit. And uh, so then he started asking us, like, what we were doing. You know, oh, we're like just doing a bike tour. We came from wherever. And he goes, oh, like, you know, are you guys professionals? And we're like, yeah, like, well, kind of. Like, <laughs> we, we, we were professionals last week. I don't really know what we are now. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, it was like, then he was like, oh, it's you. <laughs> and I was like, huh? Uh, he was like, oh, you, I read about you in the newspaper. I was like, I, d I didn't know we were in the newspaper. He goes, oh, but you're famous. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't know about that. But, uh, and then he was like going, oh, yeah, I read about you. Your team folded, whatever. It was like, it was in the newspaper. And I was like, Wow, this is this is really crazy. Like this is actually blowing up. And uh, so yeah, then then it was like that was kind of where I was like, oh, this is this is like real, mm, you know. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it was just super cool the response we got from everyone, um, and it was just kind of fun to interact with everyone on social media as well. And kind of we really didn't know where we were going each day, and it was kind of fun to like put out the destination and have people kind of say, oh, that's a real cool climb to do, go this way and stuff like that. And, yeah, and when we met people out on the road as well, it just absolutely made our week. It was so cool. Um, like, you're on the last stage, remember when we, uh, we did the Col de Bonnet, the final climb, and then we were doing the Valley Road home, and there was, like, this car behind us, like, beeping the horn, and we, like, <laughs> had the cameras out the window. Oh. <laughs> I was like, motorbase is home, I'm absolutely <laughs> naked. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was awesome, really. So, thank you, everyone, for this. Yeah. Nice, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. It, from the outside, it looked like you know just a classic boys' own adventure. You know, was that what it was? It, what it felt like? Did did you rediscover anything about your love of the bike or why you got into it to begin with? Or I mean, Larry, you say how it made you look at things with a fresh eye again? Yeah, I definitely. I'd have to say, you know, I mean, I think for the both of us, like we both really love cycling, and and we're not people who like just like oh miserable and just do it for money or whatever or just because it's a job it's like we're, we do cycling because we actually love riding our bikes but I think sometimes with all the training and you know 
you know, always looking the power meter and blah blah blah. Like I, I'm, I'm really, I'm kind of a nerd with all the training and everything. You know, I, I'm always reading every scientific everything, and like you know, I'm trying to always find the best training method, this, that, the other thing. I'm really into all that kind of stuff. And I think sometimes you kind of like lose the first reason why you got on the bike, which is, yeah, going out and like having fun with your friends and, you know, just messing around, racing each other, smashing each other, mm -hmm. eating a bunch of cookies and <laughs> stuff like that. And like, I think I kind of like lost that part of it. And this is something that really made that like, come back and yeah I mean we had we had a lot of fun yeah definitely like I think when I first started getting into cycling um, I'd kind of you'd meet the local club at the bus stop mm -hmm. you didn't we didn't know where you were going how long it would be you'd just turn up and you'd have a mad adventure that day and then be school the next day sort of thing um, so then it was kind of just going back to doing that but it was for eight it was like for eight days so you could do it wherever we wanted like a massive ride and just whatever there's no rules um, and be completely spontaneous and um, just wake up and aim for there and if we didn't get there it didn't matter we could go longer shorter do more climbs and um, so it was just pure freedom i guess um, and uh, that was the best bit for me i think and has any of that stayed with you then have you managed to keep some of that yeah, holiday vibe i'm, I'm definitely going to try to because i think like at the start we when we both set off we were like we we're going to be so knackered at the end of this like we're just gonna if we were racing after this it would be like a complete form like messer upper um, messer upper. <laughs> <laughs> it would ruin our form. We basically thought. A form messer upper. <laughs> that was not the word he was going <laughs> to use, but you know. But um, <laughs> to be honest, like we weren't that bad after it. It was like we weren't sick or anything. We weren't as like to be honest, I'd have been more tired for than Tour of Britain after the, the transfers and races mm. and the travel and everything. We would just turn up at a hotel, and that was that was it. And then we'd leave the next day from the same place. We had dinner with Stacy like the night we got back, I think. Yeah, mm. and and. She was dead from working to her brain, and she's like, "What is wrong with you guys? Like, you have more energy than when you <laughs> left." You know, we were like, "Oh, so excited telling her about her trip." And yeah. So like, funny. I'd love to be able to use the same sort of philosophy and training in the future, mm. um, and do something kind of similar. Because I think we'd be really like, if we had a big goal, we'd be so scared of doing something like this before an actual like big race. Um, so I guess if it's, if we've got the balls to do something. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Is like we're always so. We always like, oh yeah, we're gonna do this now, and then we fall back into our own ways. But it is something I'd like to integrate, and yeah. I, I actually think it can be really beneficial, because mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all too serious mm -hmm. most of the time, uh, and yeah, we can loosen up a bit. And and honestly, I, like you were flying after. I, I think I actually maybe went a bit too deep, and then I, <laughs> I kind of died, but like I didn't tell him that. So uh, so yeah, I think as long as you do it the right way, I definitely think. But I, I'd love to like integrate something with it like into my training in the future because yeah i mean it definitely wasn't a bad thing so mm, yeah for sure like i think it just surprised us to be honest because we literally did the complete opposite of <laughs> what you're supposed to do as a professional cyclist <laughs> like we slept like so little and ate the opposite foods and yeah <laughs> <laughs> just went way longer had fun it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah well sure. speaking of fun i'm only asking this because it did feature in um, you mentioned it as you went along. Um, Connor, you mentioned Stacey, your girlfriend's here. Like, I have to ask, how many Tinder accounts does one person need? Oh, what? <laughs> Where does this come? <laughs> Just one. Did that not feature? No? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, it's too hard to do Tinder when you're like tired from riding your bike yeah. all day. A different place, it'd be yeah, kind of hard to meet so, up. He was but. so focused on the task. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no Tinder on that trip. No. <laughs> well, well, we'll skip over that. Yeah. Um, next year, you are learning French at the moment, Larry. Immersive, yeah. fully immersive French course for your new team. What does 2019 hold in store for you? It's going to be as much a surprise for me as it is for you, I think. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, I'm really excited. So next year I'm riding for... AG2R, as uh, you Très bien. Yeah, French team. <laughs> and, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to be really a different experience than anything I've had in the past because it's, it's, you know, it's very much a French team and uh, don't really speak so much French, so that's why I'm signing up. Uh, and, and I just think that's one of the really cool things about cycling is we have this, this opportunity to you know, integrate or experience other cultures uh, that maybe we otherwise wouldn't be able to. And, and, you know, it's this great opportunity to learn new languages. And if we don't really take advantage of that during our time as cyclists, it's like that would be, I guess, a crime, really. Mm. Um, so it's like a really nice new opportunity. Plus, 
it's an amazing team, and I already have quite a few friends on there from some of my former teams, so yeah, I just hope, uh, I don't really know what my schedule holds yet. We have a, a camp at the end of the month where uh, I'll find that out, but yeah, I'm just really excited to uh, yeah, be back in the World Tour and do some big races and hopefully uh, yeah, have some fun, mm. and yeah, that's, I, I'm not 100% sure what it holds for me, but I know it's going to be a good year, so. What about you, Connor? Still working on it. I was, I was hoping to be able to say something today, but I've got to just wait a little bit longer. So, but looking promising. But looking positive for yeah, the next year at least. Looking promising, yeah. So just wait a bit longer and hopefully I can say something. And th I mean, this no go philosophy continues really. I mean, you've done a collaboration with Massive Central, they've produced some. Um, um, T-shirts and yeah. some posters for you guys, isn't that right? Yeah, so we've got um, some T-shirts and posters with uh, the Massive Central, so, and uh, the profits are going to charity. So, if you so want you've both to chosen a, a charity, yeah. what have you chosen and why? Um, so I chose the Dave Rayner Fund um, when, uh, when I first started out when I was uh, a junior, and after junior, the first three years when I was under 23, I went to Belgium, lived there, and they'd support me, um, and uh, enough kind of like living, rent, food, um, and uh, it's just a great charity, supports young riders, trying to give it a go um, on the continent. So uh, I wouldn't have, there's no way I'd have been able to do it without them. So it was cool to maybe give a little bit back to them. Um, and then Larry chose the second charity. Well, we were kind of choosing the charities together. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, uh, yeah, so we had been talking about how this, this trip was so good for our mental health, you know? And we were just saying how essentially we were just in, yeah, not a very good place, either of us, before. Uh, and <clears throat> yeah, both kind of like miserable and worried and scared and yeah, a lot of emotions. Uh, and just going out there and doing this like really just cleared our minds and helped us so much. So we were saying how it'd be really cool to do something for uh, a mental health charity. And so when we were talking about uh, what, what charities to do, you know, we were just throwing around and... Uh, and then, yeah, it was one of the charities we, we decided to pick yeah. was, uh, it's called Young Minds, and they help uh, younger people with like mental health issues and stuff like that. So, yeah, we thought uh, it would be fitting. Mm. I think just the bike in general, it's just such a good thing for your mental health. Um, and uh, just being out in nature, out in the wild and the mountains, um, and also just having a bit of self-dependency again, just being completely mm -hmm. your, yourself looking after you, you know, and also the camaraderie of friendship. Um, just such a great thing to do. I'd recommend it to anyone, really, to give it a go. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I think mm. that you're both giving something back in that way. It's wonderful. And using all of the power of this to, to raise money. If you want to get one of those T-shirts, I did write it down, oh dear, um, massivecentral.co.uk if you want to buy one of those T-shirts. Um, but what next for the No Go Tour then? Will we do it again? Will you an, open it up? Will you go further afield? Or is it just a one-off to... Uh, Live in that moment in time. It's not one off. Uh, I think we will have some developments in the future, but yeah. the developments are developing. Um, <laughs> it's still open. As they so tend to do. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need to go back into the office and plan a bit. Yeah. But no, I, I really want to do another one. Maybe. Uh, I mean, he was trying to like, let's do it now. Let's, like, let's do it next week. You yeah. know, the like, next day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I'd love to do one a bit, like push ourselves a bit more, go to a bit of a wilder place and... He wants to go to all the wild places. I'm like, let's like, let's go somewhere. I want to camp. I want to do some camp. kind of adventure, but like, <laughs> let's not go too crazy. Yet. Uh, uh, I'm working on him, folks. That'll be like no go tour six. You know? <laughs> but your friendship has obviously survived this anyway. I mean, I'm sure there were yeah. some fractious moments, but you've come out the other side. Yeah, I think I think at the start I was like, oh, we're definitely going to have one row at some point. Like, it's impossible not to when you're so close to someone for so long and getting tired on a lot of occasions <laughs> and hungry. Um, but really, we didn't have any. Sort no, of row. I think we're both pretty agreeable. Yeah, I think like the main saviour was the fact that Larry was so much faster than me on the climb, so I'd be kind of a good couple of kilometres <laughs> back. <from him. laughs> So You're never the, actually having to ride yeah, together. By the time I got to the top, he'd like relaxed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was so tired. I was like, oh, yeah, I can't. Uh, he was a good sport too. It was like, yeah. Like, as long as you feed him Haribo. I, I, did, feed, I, yeah. I did feed him a lot. Like, <laughs> the, the crankiest he got was on the last day and he'd fed me the whole day. <laughs> and given me, he literally gave me all his food. So we got to the I Love Nice sign back home and 
I was like full of energy. I was like, why are you so tired, Larry? I was like, I've given you all my food just to get you back here. And did you not what, keep wanting to stop on the last day as well? Like the end is oh, in yeah, sight. You did. Yeah, I did want to stop quite a bit on the last day. I, I just Forgot wanted it to be that. perfect. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to have like to be too hot or too cold or to be hungry. I just wanted to be like <laughs> cruise into town. Like, oh, yeah. Have your moment. Yeah. Maybe like take off his base layer or something like that, like 20 <laughs> minutes in town. And he had oh. stopped for water like 15 minutes away. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. It was just really hot when we got home. It had been cold the whole trip, but then he's yeah. baking. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, we, 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 we got along pretty well. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Well, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to follow it with you. Thank you so much for opening it to social yeah. media and yeah, for, you. I think, well, I think, inspiring a lot of people to not just get on your bike, but just enjoy it again and not take everything quite so seriously. And also, I guess, to take something from a position of adversity and, and you know, turn that around, really, and turn it on its head. So thank you very much indeed. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Warbass and Connor Dunn. <laughs> thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> milk it, milk it. <laughs> if you go off that way. Yeah, yeah sweet. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, from that to something really rather different.